Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to be talking about waves. So let's first start talking about the different parts of a wave. If we take a look at our little wave right here, the high point or the highest point in a wave is called a crest or peak. The low point of a wave is called the trough. If we take a look right here, the wavelength of a wave is the distance between two successive peaks or crests or points on a wave. For example, we can take a wavelength down here also. That would also be considered one little wavelength. Or we can even go from this point here to this point here. Two successive points on a wave is called the wave's wavelength. And in chemistry, we symbolize wavelength with this Greek letter of the alphabet called lambda. Okay, so wavelength, once again, is the distance between two successive points on a wave. Last but not least, we have amplitude or wave height. This is how high the wave travels above the baseline. All right, we can say that this right here is the baseline. And it looks like uh, amplitude is going to be how high above that baseline the wave is. So understand these different parts of a wave. Understand amplitude, crest or peak, trough and understand wavelength. Let's now take a look at the different types of waves. All right, so if we take a look at the two different main types of waves, we have longitudinal waves versus transverse waves. So let's take a look at this one here. A longitudinal wave causes a disturbance in the direction of its travel. So for example, the sound that is coming out of my voice right now, it is reaching your ears through tiny little longitudinal sound waves. Okay, and if we take a look at this little picture here, a longitudinal wave is going to cause a disturbance in the direction of the travel. So things kind of get compressed together and travel in one direction, and there you go. Don't confuse longitudinal waves with transverse wave. A transverse wave causes a disturbance perpendicular to the direction of travel, and light waves are an example of this or different forms of electromagnetic radiation like microwaves, like gamma rays, like radio waves. All of these are going to be transverse waves. All right, a transverse wave once again causes a disturbance that is perpendicular to the direction of its travel. So understand the difference, people, between longitudinal waves versus transverse waves and understand that sound waves are a type of longitudinal wave, whereas electromagnetic radiation like light waves, for example, are uh, one example of a transverse wave. So now let's take a look at wavelength versus frequency and understand their relationship to one another. All right, so wavelength versus frequency. It says right here that a wavelength is the distance, once again, between two successive points on a wave. And the Greek letter of the alphabet, lambda, is used to represent wavelength. So if we take a look right here, the distance between two successive points on this wave is going to be wavelength like, like we stated earlier. But now let's take a look at frequency. Frequency of a wave is the amount of wavelengths that pass a point every single second. And when we measure frequency, we measure it in something called hertz. So keep in mind that these waves are moving in one direction or another. And if we take a look at this wave right here, as the wavelengths get smaller and smaller and smaller and get more bunched up, the frequency is going to increase. Once again, as these wavelengths get closer and closer together and decrease, the frequency is going to increase. And that is because wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. All right, the frequency of a wave and its wavelength are going to be inversely proportional. So as a wave's wavelength decreases, its frequency is going to increase. And as a wave's wavelength increases, its frequency is going to decrease. Okay, so they are inversely proportional. If wavelengths get smaller, the frequency increases. And if we stretch this wave out and increase the wavelength, in that case there, then the frequency is going to decrease. They're inverse of one another. So that's an important concept to understand. So now let's take a look at AM versus FM radio waves. All right, so now let's talk about frequency modulation versus amplitude modulation. So what is frequency modulation? It says that frequency, frequency modulation, or FM, is the encoding of information in a radio wave by varying the instantaneous frequency. So if we take a look at this FM radio wave, we'll notice that the amplitude is staying the same. That is to say, the wave height is staying the same. However, the frequency is changing over time. We have longer wavelengths here, which means a... Uh, lower frequency and we have shorter wavelengths in this little region of the wave here for higher frequencies so at an fm radio station what they're doing is they're changing the frequency of those radio waves and then they're broadcasting it through their antenna uh, at which point you receive it on your antenna it goes through a little decoder and 
gets pumped into a speaker and then you hear that as sound. In an AM radio station, what they're doing is they're adjusting the amplitude of those radio waves, okay? They're adjusting the wave height. For example, we have really big amplitude here, really small amplitude here. That is because that radio station is going to be adjusting the amplitude, okay? So understand the difference between FM radio waves and AM radio waves, frequency modulation versus amplitude modulation. So one last important thing that you need to understand is that the wavelength and frequency of a wave are going to be inversely proportional. So if we take a look right here, if we squeeze this wave together, if we're going to squeeze this wave together here and decrease the wavelengths, right? If we decrease the wavelengths here, that is to say we make them shorter, then the frequency is going to increase. Okay, so waves with relatively small wavelengths are going to have high frequency. And if we stretch this wave out and increase the wavelengths here in this instance here the frequency is going to decrease okay so high uh, frequency means that you have short wavelengths and low frequency is going to mean that you have long wavelengths so let's take a look now uh, at a little animation or simulation of a wave and play around with it so that way we can understand these concepts all right, what we're looking at right here is complements of the University of Colorado. These are called FET simulations. I'll put the little link in here in the bottom right corner so that way you can play around with these two. Just plug this into the web address in your, um, your browser and it should take you here. But what we can do with this is we can start to adjust different, uh, different uh, aspects of a wave. For example, if we go ahead and slow this down, we can slow it down to slow motion and then check this out as we start to adjust the amplitude you'll notice that the wave height starts to decrease right and let me go ahead and put this back in normal mode so we have very little amplitude here in fact this represents 0 0.40 centimeters and if you want to you can adjust this and make it even bigger so if we take a look it looks like the amplitude is going to start to increase right so we'll just go ahead and play around with this here's the uh, amplitude of 0.92 centimeters and if we want we can also start to adjust the frequency of this wave right right now we're at a frequency of 0.88 Hertz that means that about 0.88 uh, wavelengths are passing a given point each and every second on this little simulation right here and if we start to increase the frequency then what we'll start to notice is that there's going to be a decrease in the wavelengths right the wavelengths are getting shorter and shorter and shorter as we increase the frequency and if we work this backwards if we decrease the frequency you'll start to notice that these wavelengths are going to get longer and longer and longer okay so understand that concept that frequency and wavelength are going to be inversely proportional okay so we'll play around with this a little bit here we can adjust things like uh, slow motion for example if you want to take a look we can also mess around with the amplitude we're decreasing the wave height or amplitude and we're increasing the amplitude as well all right so what i want you guys to take from this simulation here is the idea that is if you increase the frequency of the wave you're going to be decreasing those wavelengths and if you go the other way if you decrease the frequency then what you're going to end up doing is you're going to be uh, increasing those little wavelengths okay so this is waves in a nutshell understand the parts of a wave understand how frequency and wavelength work and um, if you guys click this little bomb in the bottom right hand corner that will subscribe you to my channel and feel free to leave any comments or questions down below here and I hope this was helpful